Welcome to Tampa Home Talk with your host, native Tampa real estate girl, Katrina Madewell, a full-time, passionate, out-of-the-box thinker, love for home ownership kind of realtor with over 21 years of combined mortgage and real estate experience. Tune in every week at this time for expert advice on everything you need to know about home ownership, finance, maintaining great credit, building wealth, and making your everyday life better, and how you can be financially successful today and tomorrow. Remember, love where you live or let Katrina fix it. Now, here's your host of Tampa Home Talk, Katrina Madewell. Good afternoon. This is Katrina Madewell on the Real Estate Radio Network. Thank you so much for joining us today, this afternoon. You can catch us here every Thursday and Saturday at 5 p.m. We have a fantastic show lined up for you this afternoon. We have a couple fantastic guests. Jerry Black with Geohazards, Inc. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. And we also have John Williams with Amec. Great to be here. Thanks. So you guys have similar but different. I'm sure you've crossed paths at one point or another. But we have a geologist in the studio today and a structural engineer. So the purpose of our show today is, and the topic I should say is, is it a sinkhole? Is it a sinkhole? Is it not a sinkhole? I have cracks. What do I do? Well, today is a great day to find out. And we're going to be answering some of those frequently asked questions that these guys get every single day. And you can also call into the studio because we're airing live today. We will take your show questions for these guys again our geologist and our structural engineer do i have a sinkhole or not studio call in line 727-441-3000 again you can ask our guest questions today as we're doing the show live 727-441-3000 welcome to the show today gentlemen thank you thanks are you guys excited yeah kind of this is neat okay So I know we had a chance to talk a little bit before the show, and I know one of the most commonly asked questions you guys get is, do I have a sinkhole? And we're going to get into some of those questions and answers that you would give the person that you're speaking to. But I thought a great place to start with, do I have a sinkhole or do I not have a sinkhole, just so you can understand the premise of what cracking is. Right, John? Right. And what a sinkhole might be. Right, Jerry? Correct. We're going to talk about Florida's geological makeup. Am I saying that correctly? Yes. Okay. What's the geology of Florida like? Yes. So what are we made of here in the state of Florida? What is underneath our feet every day? What's underneath the roads that we drive on, the houses that we live in, the buildings that we visit? And so I thought that would be just a fantastic place to dive into today's show. Sure thing. Well, um, basically, Florida is very unique um, for the United States. We are lying on, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of feet of limestone. And that limestone is about 20 to 30 million years old. And it's um, taken a long time to develop a well-developed cavity system. And then we have sands and clays that are deposited on top of that. And you you have those two conditions plus uh, changing water table, and you can develop sinkholes as a very common geologic uh, occurrence. So let's use an analogy, like something else besides geology. So if someone, you know, if the person listening right now, maybe they're just not familiar, where you could do it in your sleep, right? Because you're a geologist. Well, uh, you could use the sands through the hourglass kind of. Uh, uh, analogy because if you have a, a void in the subsurface and then you have sand that slowly winds its way down into that cavity, you eventually will form a depression at the surface. And when you see that depression, that's what a sinkhole is. And it can vary in size from, you know, a, maybe a foot or two in diameter to uh, quite large and in some cases can be hundreds of feet in diameter. So how does water play a part if using that same hourglass scenario, right, with the sand and the rocks? Yes. If we throw some water in there, tell me what that looks like. Um, the water is what drives the um, the whole action. Uh, gravity, and if you have a downward hydraulic uh, gradient that uh, draws the water down through the soil column. You back up. Let's explain that in lay terms for the sure. person listening. Sure. It's basically... Um, you know, the water is flushing through the soil column. It's going down in 
through that water so column. It's sucking down or pulling down. Pulling down, and it's helping those materials move into those cavities in limestone. And it can take hundreds, if not thousands, of years for that to happen. So it, it, it takes, you have to think in geologic time and not necessarily the last know, hum, hundred years. Human time. Yeah. Exactly. I know that what I, the analogy, the best analogy I ever heard, which is what I shared with you, and I think you had one that was better, but the one that I heard was, you know, Swiss cheese. If you could imagine what Florida looks like underneath, the best way to visualize that might be Swiss cheese. So you'll have some areas of that cheese that are perfectly flat. There's no holes in it. And then you have other areas of that cheese that have a lot of holes in them. Yes. And sometimes that cheese is near the surface and sometimes it's hundreds of feet below the surface with a lot of sand and clay on top of it. So where you have the areas of the cheese, which is the limestone with a lot of cavities, and then you have a thinner cover of, say, sand and clay, um, that's where you are going to have a greater frequency of sinkholes developing in the state of Florida. And it's any it's a natural process, really, that could happen anywhere. Correct. And, um, again, these, these are natural occurrences. Um, it, it is mainly where it is, the limestone is closer to the surface. So there are areas of Florida that are, that are more sinkhole-prone than others. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the Tampa region is one of those regions. But areas like South Florida, the, the Panhandle, areas like Jacksonville, the limestone is hundreds of feet th- deep, so the uh, the chance of sinkholes developing there are less than in this area. And that makes sense. You probably have to, I guess, start like with the basics they teach in science class, right? So you have the core of the earth, and then like what's in between? I forget. You have to <laughs> the just tell me. Okay, the mantle. <laughs> you have the inner core, outer core, mantle, and then you have the lithosphere, which is getting towards the crust. And so, where does a lime rock fit into all that? Uh, limestone is a sedimentary rock. It's formed um, in the the oceans. If you want an analogy, think about like the Bahamas or the Great Barrier Reef. You have massive amounts of limestone that can, that uh, precip- calcium carbonate precipitates out of the water and you can form limestone. So and it then builds it gets, up over time is what I'm hearing. It builds up over time. I've seen, you know, sections kind of, like of limestone. Plaque, right? If you don't brush your teeth, it'll build up over time. <laughs> kind, of, kind of like that. But you can get thousands of feet of plaque um, or th- I've seen very large thicknesses of, of limestone. And in the limestone underlying Florida in some areas can reach that, that thickness and that's what makes up our aquifer system as well that's where we get our groundwater from and i know it's interesting when you when you start talking about water and i don't want to spoil that too much because we we have a important little part we're going to share towards the end of the show just to keep you guys listening for the whole time but when you get general questions like i have a depression or a little hole in my yard should i be concerned with that jerry if i have a hole in my yard yeah well i get uh, again i get questions like this all the time i usually say first off how big is it and where is it located? Um, usually if they're small little holes um, that could be sinkhole related and they're far away from your house, I say fill it in and just watch it. If the hole is a little bit bigger and it's close to your foundation and you have some cracking or thing, other types of damage associated with it, that's when the level of concern should, uh, I guess, es- escalate a little bit more. But uh, for the small little depressions, those happen all the time and could just be, you know, washouts from like heavy rain events or just erosional type of thing where water is moving through your yard. So if you see small little depressions, it's not a, a need to be too terribly concerned right but if they get a little bit bigger and it gets closer to your house and you can see damage associated with it that's when the i would say you need to take the next step you're listening to tampa home talk with jerry black and john williams a couple of our expert guest panelists today um, geologists and structural engineer we're talking about do we have a sinkhole do we not have a sinkhole and getting into some of those everyday questions that you guys get so who wants to take the next one as far as it, you have a report and it says that there's sinkhole activity present in my property. What's the difference between a sinkhole and sinkhole activity? Because I'm sure for the person listening, they're thinking like me as a sinkhole is a sinkhole, right? Exactly. And the, the, the difference between those two terms is very important because everybody hears the word sinkhole and immediately gets concerned. And then they automatically say, think when you have sinkhole activity that you're going to have a sinkhole. And that's not the case. Sinkhole activity is the the workings underground that will eventually lead to forming a depression at the surface. So you can have sinkhole activity where you have a loose zone or cavities underneath your house, but that doesn't necessarily mean a sinkhole is going to be formed. So sinkhole activity is the mechanism that will eventually lead to forming a sinkhole. So if you have a report, it says you have sinkhole activity, that doesn't mean your house is going to fall on the ground. It just means you have shifting and settling. and Right. You have the, the makings of 
you know something moving something moving the the, the sands moving down into the, the cavity in limestone and ultimately you could form a depression but the idea is that you detect the sinkhole activity before that happens and there are methods where you can remediate that and you can eliminate the possibility of, of a sinkhole forming so that's the good news if you live here in the sunshine yes, state and you're listening it's not all bad you know like i shared with you we deal that's one of our vices we have here right we have hurricanes we have sinkholes the more people that move to the state the more that's going to be an issue right it is what it is it is what it is yeah people want to think that uh, oh but there's so many more sinkholes now it's just because we have so many more people and we're developing in areas where where we haven't been there before so sinkholes are still occurring at the same rate it's just you know i think now we're reaching 20 million people in florida it's just they're going to be more common because we're exploring those new areas so what would you say to the person, and we get this question a lot, if I have someone that they're moving from another state, and maybe it's California, and they deal with earthquakes there, but it's no big deal to them. For me, I would be probably petrified of an earthquake. But let's say you know they want to move to Florida, the cost of living is a lot lower, they can get a lot more for their money than they can in California, so they're like, I want to move here. But my big concern is sinkhole. Like, Are they everywhere in Florida? Should I be worried about that? Um, they're not everywhere in Florida. Um, they're in. I usually tell people they're in north central Florida, the I four corridor, Tampa, north even towards Gainesville, and up until Tallahassee. That's the that's kind of the sinkhole alley, if you so to speak. Um, south Florida, if you wanted to move to Miami, Boca. Don't, don't worry about sinkholes and even the east coast if you're on the beach on the east coast or you're in pensacola the 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 the, the geology is just not correct it's yeah the just, genetic makeup underneath the soil is different right correct it's just the, the 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 mechanisms aren't there to develop sinkholes so i tell people that when they move down and they have a concern to really evaluate their their level of concern if they've identified a property you can have testing done as a part of the contract or you can have it done you know once you purchase the home to evaluate and see what is the potential at my house so there's there's things you can do even before you buy the what house. is the cost what does a test like that cost again it it, 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 it can be anywhere from just a, a quick site visit by a structural engineer or a geologist and that's you know. where you come in john right right i mean if you don't have cracking and you don't have any kind of foundation settlement then you know you probably don't have anything to really be worried about. It's when you have the damage and then you also are in a sinkhole prone area. So I, I could send out a, a structural engineer and people could say, hey, this looks fine. And sometimes that's enough. But then there are methods you could do a geophysical surveying and you could also drill. You can use bo- you can do borings to find out what is in the subsurface to try and evaluate what the potential for sinkhole development is. Fantastic. Jerry Black here with Geohazards and John Williams with Amec. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk. This is your host, Katrina Madewell. Studio call in line 727-441-3000. If you have some questions for our experts in the studio today, if you have some structural cracking sinkhole-related questions, 727-441-3000. We will be back in just a minute. When we come back after the break, we're going to dive into some more of those questions like I have a crack on my concrete underneath my carpet when I pulled it up what does that mean we're going to get into that and more when we come back in just a minute thank you yeah that'll be this for next (laughs) host of Tampa Home Talk right here on 1250 Winds every Saturday at 4 p.m. weekly I'm going to give you market appropriate timely information regarding home ownership matters because we want to make your everyday life better Wherever you are in life, it's our mission to bring you good advice so you can maintain good credit, live within your means, and build wealth. My team and I are passionate about it. Love where you live, or I'll fix it. Tampa Home Talk on 1250 Winds every Saturday at 4. Curious what your Tampa home is worth? Here's an easy way to find out what homes like yours are selling for in today's market. Text the word VALUE to 813 377 2775 for a free report on Tampa house prices. We'll send you a free report with up to the minute statistics based on all homes for sale sold in your neighborhood over the last six months in all price ranges. To get your free report on Tampa Bay house prices, just call or text the word value to 813-377-2775. Tampa Home Talk, 1250 wins every Saturday at 4 p.m. 
Aaron Davis here, owner of Hillsborough Title, serving all of Tampa Bay. Our service, strength, and knowledge make us different. From Polk County to the Gulf, Pasco to Manatee, Tampa Bay, we've got you covered. Visit us on the web at thebesttitle.com. That's thebesttitle.com. You're buying a house. Congratulations. So while you're worrying about the paperwork, leave the moving part to us. We're Woody & Sons Moving Company, a Florida-licensed and insured mover, and we offer same-day written estimates. Plus, no sneaky mileage, stairs, or additional stop fees. All we ask is that you check out our great ratings on Google and Angie's List, then go to WoodyAndSons.com to learn more. Whether you need a full-service pack and move or some extra hands, at Woody & Sons Moving Company, we move you. Welcome back. You are listening to Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell. In studio today, we have John Black with Geohazards, Inc., and John Williams with Amec, structural engineer and geologist in studio today. So the topic of today's show, is it a sinkhole, is it not? And if you missed the first part of our show today, you're going to want to check it out in its entirety. Just visit our Facebook page, and we're on Twitter, at Tampa Home Talk. You can also catch us streaming live and all of our past shows via a podcast and on YouTube. Just look for Tampa Home Talk. Studio call-in lines, 727-441-3000. Again, 727 727- Four four one three thousand. If you have a question for one of our panelists today, so the beginning part of the show, just to give you a little quick recap, if you're just joining us, we were talking about the genetic makeup of Florida and what's underneath the core surface of the Earth, and then we got into how some of that cracking happens and kind of where we are now. So I was going to have our next guest join us for the second segment, and John Williams, structural engineer with Amec, and you guys get this question. You had an appointment today, right? Where a lady had a tile cracked and so talk about just that experience in general yeah exactly the um the situation was there her tiles popped off the floor suddenly and she said it was a really loud noise uh, a lot of times people tell me that it sounds like gun shots going off in their home and i even had one gentleman tell me that he ran to his front door with his gun because he, he thought somebody was shooting in the neighborhood in the middle of the night and he looked down at his feet and his tiles were cracked and it it, it happens quite frequently and the um most of the time, the problem is that the tiles were installed incorrectly. Uh, it's really important when you saw tile or, or really wood, for that matter, that you leave a gap around the perimeter of the floor so that those tiles can expand and contract. When the temperature changes, um, which happens all the time. Uh, it we can, have significant differences in our weather here. Yes, we do. Um, and even with the changes in humidity, that can also affect the way a material expands and contracts. Um, And in this case, the tiles were trying to expand, and they they couldn't move because they were restrained around the sides by the baseboards. And then they they find a weak spot, and they all pop off the floor suddenly. And it can be pretty loud and violent. Pop up or wherever that point of least resistance is. Exactly, yeah. Usually it's where the the thin set isn't really uh, installed under the tiles correctly, and the tiles weren't pushed down all the way by the installer. It makes sense. I mean, you know, know your contractors. Make sure the person that you're working with has a reputation of doing that. Make sure they're licensed before you have them in your home. Exactly. It'll, it'll yeah. help, you know, ward off a lot of those problems. It will. So the questions that I know you guys get, because I saw it on your frequently asked questions list, and a question that we get when we're out showing property and people have questions and comments about sinkhole and cracking and all that stuff, which I obviously can't answer because I'm not licensed to do so. But we, we see this. And, uh, you know, in my, just in my head, with what I've seen, and I've seen stuff that is sinkhole related and stuff is is not. Even though I'm not an expert, I usually have some things and some signs that I look for that kind of gauge if it should be further evaluated by somebody like you. Okay. So let's talk about just in general because it happens all the time, right? People pull the carpet up because it's it's nasty and they want to put down tile right. or they want to put down hardwood floors or something different or better than carpet. Right. And they see there's a crack in the in the floor maybe and sometimes it's the whole room yeah uh it can be very common that a crack in your slab inside the home extends all the way across the inside of the house so people start getting ready to replace some flooring they're tired of the old carpet and they want some nice new floors and they they pull it up and they say oh there's a crack and then they pull it more and more and more and all of a sudden all the floors are ripped out of the house and there's cracks everywhere um and uh cracking on a a concrete slab is is very normal and it's expected um, there's almost nothing you can do to prevent concrete from cracking. The best thing you can do is try to control where the cracks occur. And typically in most of the homes in Florida, there's very little done uh, by the builder to help control where those cracks are. 
They put uh, those, like, for example, on sidewalks. You're talking about the cracks that go in between. So the, yeah, the, the lines that are, that are sometimes they're cut or sometimes they're scored in the, in the concrete when it's still wet. And you see them in your driveway and you see them in, sometimes in your garage and on your sidewalk. And those really should be on the inside of your home, too, but they very rarely are. Uh, and that concrete, as it dries, it will shrink and those cracks form. And then just like we talked about a minute ago with the tile, they, uh, the concrete expands and contracts and those cracks get a little bit wider. You know, I often wonder that myself because we sell new homes too, and I wondered why don't they put the cracks in there? I mean, I know they pour the whole slab at once, but it just doesn't make sense to me why they wouldn't, you know, intentionally put the cracks in. Well, it takes a lot more planning, honestly. Um, You have to put them in the right spot, typically where there's going to be a known transition between flooring materials. Because if you put that joint underneath, like, the middle of your living room, for example, and then you install tiles there, in most cases, that crack, because it's a natural location for the concrete to move, will reflect upwards into your tile floor and will crack your tiles. Um, so there's a lot of planning that goes into where those joints are, and typically it's along uh, right underneath where walls are. Um, but sometimes there's not enough walls, and, and sometimes there's just no planning done on the front end of the building design. So we're looking at cracks in the floor. Let's talk about the differences in some of these cracks. Okay. Not only on the floor, but on the walls and in different things. Like what are some things, and just start with the minor hairline cracks all the way up to something that should be further evaluated by someone licensed like yourself. Sure. Um, I, most of the buildings in Florida um, that, that I look at on a regular basis are concrete block. Uh, we do get a few um, wood frame buildings mixed in, but I think most of the time the cracks that people associate with Florida homes are concrete block homes, and you have to evaluate wood structures a little bit differently. But typically we'll see the stair step type cracking, you know, just like the profile of a set of stairs um, in, the, in the block walls, and uh, we'll see commonly cracks at the corners of windows and door openings. And uh, sometimes if you have a stucco finish, sometimes that cracking is only in the stucco. Uh, particularly if you you have a a perfectly vertical crack that's at the corner of a window or a door. Um, That's perfectly normal, and most of the time that's just related to the stucco finish moving. Um, where you have a, a cracking that looks like... And, well, the, to go back to your stair-step cracks, that's it's simply just normal settling that's following the point of least resistance, which is those mortar joints. Is that correct? Right. The stair-step cracking uh, can be settlement. Um, if it's a larger stair-step crack, something that you could maybe, say, slide a couple of business cards in, then that's probably a settlement-related crack. Sometimes those cracks form um, because of expansion and contraction of the wall as well. I mean, it makes total sense to me. So if you're starting as far as the smaller cracks and then you get, uh, I've heard if you can put a quarter in it, it probably should be looked at. Is that what's yeah, safe to say? Yeah, I would say that's a good rule of thumb. And so at one point, said somebody be really concerned and like, what are some of the signs that they could look for in their own home that might prompt them to get further evaluation? Well, typically more serious issues um, show themselves in other ways. So if you have a crack in the wall, and you have a a low area in the floor, and then you see separations in your ceiling or the joint tape in the corners of the walls and ceilings kind of pulling away or tearing, and you have a lot of issues all in one place, then that's definitely a a cause for concern. So we look for more focused damage and not really isolated instances around the home. So, for example, I mean, I know that you're looking at that, but, like, if someone, for example, they're out with us and they want to... They're looking at five or, or six homes today. Okay. And so there's some different ones. Let's say they just want to do a pretty little look on their own, and obviously we're going to get a home inspection. If they see any major cracking, they're going to get that further evaluated. But what are some of the things they could look at and just check on to to prompt them to maybe pass on that home entirely? Or, you know, if they really love it, get it evaluated further? Um, well, sometimes you can see, uh, you know, if a home's for sale, sometimes the owners try to cover things up, and it, large cracking would still most of the time be apparent on the exterior walls if they've, if they've done just a quick paint job. Usually a, a, a little bit more than a, a, a quick look at the walls can tell you if there's been a lot of cracks that have been patched. Um, and typically most of the time when you walk through the inside of the home, you can you can feel the floor dipping in certain areas yes. or being low. It's just sort of an uneasiness when you walk through. Or you can see the whole thing leaning kind of downward. If, if you can see it clearly, then that's definitely a sign that you probably should move on to the next building unless the price is right. <laughs> Everything can be repaired, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so 
what about and i've seen this before when we've been out you may see cracking like you mentioned in the floor but you also see it maybe in the on the inside and let's say it's going straight through block and it's right on the borderline we're not sure if we can stick a quarter in it or not but it's also on the outside too well, I would have that crack looked at. That, that would be something to, to ask an expert on to see if that crack is something serious. Um, you can get vertical cracks in masonry walls that are, that are normal cracking, um, where there should be some sort of joint to control movement of the wall. But sometimes that crack can definitely be settlement, which you, you want to evaluate because you don't want your building to settle while you're living in it. What are some of the different things that you see? Like, what are some of the different reasons why different buildings settle? I mean, obviously, construction is one of them. Yeah, there can be a lot of different reasons. Um, you know, Jerry spent a lot of time talking about sinkhole activity. That's definitely a reason why buildings settle, and that's probably the the most um, the most newsworthy <laughs> reason right. why buildings settle. That's what we all see, uh, the large holes that, you know, that open up every now and then. Um, but more commonly, you know, in Florida, we're all sitting on sand for the most part. Yes. Um, if anyone's walked out in their yard with a garden hose and stood in one spot, you have a hole in, in your yard very quickly. So... Um, it's important to to control where the water goes that runs off of your roof. That can be a cause of settlement. That is huge. If you could elaborate on that a little bit more, because we talk about this, and a lot of the builders don't, they just don't put gutters on houses. And yeah. we know what erosion can do. I've seen it for properties. Mm-hmm. You definitely know. Yeah. And you certainly know what erosion can do. Yeah, it's a it's an it's an add on item that is is expensive and you know the builders would honestly rather offer you granite countertops than gutters it sells yeah it sells right and um and but they're important uh and a good seamless gutter system can save you a lot of headache when it comes to erosion around the foundation so let's use that for an example we have a home and water's pulling off the roof there's no gutters over a period of five years ten years what's it going to look like around that foundation? How's it going to affect the house? Well, it could look like a lot of different things. Um, typically, you would have a lot of washout of the soils in that spot where you had focused runoff coming off of the roof. Um, and uh, it, it can be as bad as all the foundation completely exposed, um, which will definitely cause some settlement problems in most cases. We've seen that before. I've literally been out looking at properties, and you can tell where the water is just pulled off the side of the house. Right. And it's almost it almost looks sometimes like a dog has gotten under there and dug the dirt out, but it's just it's yeah. erosion from water. Yeah, it's, erosion it can be can, that bad. It can cause a lot of problems. I don't think a lot of people realize that, but it's uh, we see it. I see it every day probably, and if I show 10 houses, I might see it in one. It's, it's just because of lack of gutters. That's right. Yeah, and gutters are gutters are expensive. Gutters that are installed properly and that are good quality are are not cheap, but they're uh, they're definitely worthwhile. And discharged properly. I've been to houses where the, yes. it's been sawed off and the water just goes into one area right. and then they have a depression and they're going, "Well, why is that there?" And it's like all the water's going in that one. Route, yes. Route the be water better. away from the house. Yes. <laughs> it would be better to not have a gutter in in that instance if all of it's shooting out of the downspout in one spot. So you know, landscaping see. can play a part. Like what kind of plants you have if they're succulent, but they can probably only suck up so much of that water. Correct. Right. <laughs> You're listening to Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell. Our off-air studio line, in case you want to call us or text us later with questions, 813-377-2775. Again, this is Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell. We're here with Jerry Black with Geohazards and John Williams with Amec. 813-377-2775. Call us or text us, and we will get back to you with answers from our guests. We'll be back in just a minute when we come back. We're going to talk about some of the three different types of sinkholes. And then we're also going to talk about if you have a problem or you have a sinkhole or your neighbor has a sinkhole, what can you do about it? We'll be back in a minute. Hi, I'm Katrina Madewell, host of Tampa Home Talk, right here on 1250 Winds every Saturday at 4 p.m. Weekly, I'm going to give you market-appropriate timely information regarding home ownership matters because we want to make your everyday life better wherever you are in life it's our mission to bring you good advice so you can maintain good credit live within your means and build wealth my team and i are passionate about it love where you live or i'll fix it tampa home talk on 1250 wins every saturday at four curious what your tampa home is worth Here's an easy way to find out what homes like yours are selling for in today's market. Text the word VALUE to 813-377-2775 for a free report on Tampa house prices. 
we'll send you a free report with up to the minute statistics based on all homes for sale sold in your neighborhood over the last six months in all price ranges. To get your free report on Tampa Bay house prices, just call or text the word value to 813-377-2775. Tampa Home Talk, 1250 wins every Saturday at 4 p.m. Hi, this is Aaron Davis, owner of Hillsboro Title. Hillsboro Title is a local, family-owned title agency here in Tampa Bay. Our service, strength, and knowledge make us different. We've served Tampa Bay area for over 30 years. From Polk County to the Gulf, Pasco to Manatee, Tampa Bay, we've got you covered. Call us at 813-712-8888 or visit us on the web at thebesttitle.com. That's thebesttitle.com. Welcome back. This is your host, Katrina Madewell. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk. In studio today, we have Jerry Black with Geohazards, and we also have John Williams, structural engineer with Amec. Fantastic show we have today. Is it a sinkhole or not? We don't know, but we have given you a lot of information in the beginning part of the show to answer some of those questions and determine if you should have it looked at by someone licensed to do so someone like john Mm -hmm. and so if you missed the beginning part of our show please check it out because we talked about the genetic makeup of florida we also talked about cracks that we see in every single home what that means what's normal what's not so if you missed any part of today's show definitely check it out in its entirety and you can catch us on facebook on twitter on youtube and everywhere across the web at tampa home talk you can also go to our website at tampahometalk.com where we have all of our guest information so if you want to call them directly after the show and reach out to them with questions, you can do that. Our off-air number is 813-377-2775. Again, our off-air number, you can call or text us at 813-377-2775. So to pick up where we left off, gentlemen, we talked about, um, we were just getting ready to get into the three different types of sinkholes, which is crazy for me because this is one of my favorite parts about hosting the show is I get not only to meet fantastic people like both of you guys, but I learned something new every show, and it's honestly the best part about it. <laughs> well, not all sinkholes are made alike. I, yes, exactly. I use an analogy every day. I say not all realtors are made alike, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's three different types of sinkholes. We talked about normal cracking. Where would you like to dive in? Well, let's uh, we'll, we'll dive in with the ones that people get to see on TV a lot. Uh, the, yes, the, right? The, the Seth Naran that gets sucked down into his house. And does, uh, ah. it, yeah, exactly. I actually had a question for you about sure. that. So how... And you were talking about the soil and the stuff underneath, because all sinkholes are not necessarily the same depth, right? They could be very different. Correct. It depends on the depth of limestone, the size of the cavity, and then in areas where you have the, the what we call cover collapse sinkholes, there's usually a very quick breach of a clay layer, and then all the volume of sand and soil go into the cavity at a very rapid pace. Um, Areas where you just have sand covering the cavities, it's more like the sand through the hourglass slowly developing, and those are called cover subsidence sinkholes. But the ones that you see on the news that happen very quickly are called cover collapse, and that's what everybody has protection in their insurance company, uh, insurance policy as well. So cover collapse. So this, I want to just chime in on what you're saying, because I don't think a lot of people realize if you haven't moved in a long time, you likely may still have sinkhole coverage on your policy but if you change your insurance policy or you have a new policy in the last several years when all these sinkhole claims started you probably have an exclusion to your policy for sinkholes that's correct and and they'll have catastrophic ground collapse but not sinkhole coverage right if something catastrophic like the uh, the thing that happened in sethner or in claremont or in dunedin if you have that that kind of damage to your home where a hole opens up and swallows your house you are covered but uh, for the slower working... But check with your insurance policy, actually, but you should be covered. You're, you're covered. But in 2011, they changed the uh, the insurance laws to where you, you now have to have... Well, insurance companies could, have, could opt out in coverage, and a lot of people got canceled without even knowing they got canceled. And then if you try to get a new policy, um, most, com- most companies won't write sinkhole coverage in areas where you're going to be sinkhole prone. And if they do, it's very expensive. Yes, I mean, thousands yeah. of dollars on top we're, of what you're paying already. We're seeing, uh, in, uh, in many cases cases it's equal to the amount of the policy exactly. sometimes more mm-hmm. right but so you don't have coverage unless you have structural damage to your home which john was saying is that you, you have you have a area that's concentrated you have visible damage and there is a definition that they came up with where if you meet one of the criteria 
and then you have sinkhole activity on your home, then you have coverage. But right now, we've you know we don't see a lot of claims because people pretty much don't have coverage anymore because they were able to opt out. Well, you know, and this is very controversial. We had some attorneys on our show a while back and um, insurance, uh, public insurance adjusters. And while they serve a purpose, I do believe that there's likely some attorneys that may uh, may abuse what was, was the, there Was before. the hour on the radio show enough time for the attorneys <laughs> to talk? Uh, you know, they, they could easily the fill up, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, there was the reason they changed the laws in 2011 is that there was fraud. There were, you know, the... the Sinkholes became more of a burden on the insurance industry well, than people were like, oh, I'm going to get my house paid off. I'm just going to exactly. have a little crack. I'm going to say I have a sinkhole. I mean, when, when insurance companies are paying out 10 times the amount of money they're taking in on premiums on sinkholes, it just doesn't make much business sense for them to keep coverage. And that's, you know, and they lobbied Tallahassee and they got the, the change. Right. Who can best answer just even the cost to determine that, right? Because let's say an insured calls to make a claim. The insurance company has to further at least look at it or investigate it. What the cost for that test? Is. It depends on the policy. If uh, if the insurance company is just asking if there's structural damage, that type of investigation can be um, two to three thousand dollars. If that that's it, kind it, of like a quick on-site investigation. It is. Okay. Yeah, that's a structural analysis of the building. Right. Um, no deep subsurface. Testing. Right. If that's involved, it can reach ten, twelve thousand dollars easily. And that's what the problem was: is that every before the coverage changed, every Everybody who put in a claim and they said they thought they had sinkhole activity, the insurance companies had to go out and hire a firm like uh, Amec or Geohazards and do the full testing. So they were they were shelling out ten, fifteen thousand dollars per pop, even if there was no sinkhole activity. And, and the likelihood of them finding something is probably very good in our area because we have that stuff. If you drill down deep enough, you're probably going to find it, right? Well, and that's the whole thing. And then you have the gamut of people who interpret data differently well and, yeah and i mean people, attorneys and can spin and change altogether. and have a different opinion we right that's what they do so entirely on that right but, but no i mean that 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 was the issue is that you know people were fraudulently just saying hey i've got 20 houses i'm just going to file a claim on all 20 of them and see if i win the sinkhole lottery i mean i've heard i heard yeah. that term and almost swore right. my tongue i was like good lord which is sad because it's affected <laughs> it the sad. people that no longer have the coverage i mean i right. well, i personally had my homeowner's insurance with state farm for years and there was no reason why they should have canceled me they said they canceled me for non-payment but i don't escrow so i pay it on my own and i know better but they were just ditching the policy so and ever i mean they all did that yep uh, and it's and you know it's just, it, it yeah. happens and i would agree with that they definitely all do it so the three different types of sinkholes. Did you answer? Um, let's go. Well, yeah, go quickly back. A cover collapses, the, the, the abrupt ones, and they can be pretty large in size. I think the one that started it all that everybody might know is in 1981, the Winter Park uh, sinkhole. Yeah. that swallowed up the Porsche dealership, the YMCA, and was over 300 feet in diameter. I think that's, I forgot about that one. That's the one that woke everybody up, and that's what initially then in 1985, the how, legislature. How does a void get that big? Like, how does that oh, happen so quick? Oh, I mean, if you've seen any of the uh, diving videos, you can go on in National Geographic. I mean, some of the the caverns are are ginormous. <laughs> That's an important part. Yeah. But there was caverns underneath that dealership. Oh yeah, there's there's cavities that size over under Florida. It just depends on how close they are to the surface and if they're able to accept the material. And the closer to the it. surface, to the closer to the surface, probably the more likely someone may have sinkhole right. I mean, activity or related, whatever. For, for an example, this wasn't necessarily um, Mother Nature didn't do it, but uh, there was a house we did in Haines City. Somebody was drilling a well in their backyard. They got to 90 feet, hit limestone, and then hit a 40 feet cavity in limestone, and then the backyard dropped about six, seven feet overnight. The whole backyard. The whole, and it, it didn't necessarily open up this huge cavern, but you, you hit obviously something that was a uh, just mind-boggling in size to and then accept all that material and then depress the surface of the earth that much in a slope in a, a very short amount of time yes. so, so someone was drilling down and basically they disturbed mother nature right they're trying to get they're trying to put a well in and get water and and they they, <laughs> they triggered it not mother nature <laughs> well i mean that's what i'm saying mother nature said uh-uh i have stuff underneath here i shouldn't be tainted with well <laughs> exactly and so, yeah, you have the cover collapse, then you have cover subsidence, which is the slow-moving, slow-developing ones. And then you have what... Is that something that may eventually be a big sinkhole? Yes, and those are the okay. most common ones. Okay. I would say the cover collapse is about 1%. Okay. If you want to talk about all the sinkholes in Florida, very low percentage. The bigger, the, the which more common. Which is scary, thinking about insurance policy, but... Right, but again, I, the likelihood of that occurring 
at your house or any location in Florida is very rare. Gotcha. It's the slow-moving ones where you see depressions or you see the lowering of the, the Earth's surface over time, and then you have associated cracks with it. And th- those don't really trigger an open overnight. It may turn into a lake 500 years from now. Right. Who knows? And what's the best way to deal with that? Because obviously you don't want to leave cracks in your home because it invites water intrusion, bug intrusion, which is another whole setup for other problems. Right. There's a, there's definitely good patching procedures for just normal cracks. Um, if you use a, a good caulk material that's designed to be outdoors, um, that's paintable, of course, you don't want to use a silicone that um, you can't paint over. You'll, you'll never get paint to stick to that. Um, and uh, then on the outside of the home, I always recommend that people use an elastomeric paint. Yes. And if you think of elastic like, like the waistband of, of pants, yes. um, the, the paint can move and stretch as the building expands and contracts. Um, and that type of paint will cover up most small cracks. And, and it lasts longer, too. It does, yeah. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than just regular exterior house paint, but it, it's but well you, worth it. Yeah, if you're going to go through the expense, spend a little bit more money, get a really good quality paint, because it's going to last you a lot longer. Right. It, it's going to keep stuff out of your house, mm-hmm. right, like water, bugs, that kind of yep. stuff. I have several cans of it that my wife's trying to get me to put on the outside of the house right now. So <laughs> You're going to be busy this weekend. <laughs> yeah. So, and the third one that you um, see? Those were solution sinkholes. That's where limestone's maybe in the upper, say, 10, 20 feet, and there's a cavity that's really near surface, but there's not enough sand and clay over that to really form a, a large um, depression. That's in areas like those canal lots in Crystal River or Homosassa where, mm-hmm. or even, you know, you get to Hudson and Newport Ritchie. You can have a sinkhole, um, but they're just not going, you, the ge- geometry's not there to have anything that's going to be the cover collapse. And you could have concentrated area of damage, like in a corner of the home, and it could be related to a cavity that's just below the surface. But And what's that sinkhole called again? It's a solution sinkhole. Solution sinkhole. Okay. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Mainval. We have to take a very quick break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about how to fix those, right? Those different types of settlements. And we're also going to talk about Florida's precious resource, and that is water, how it relates to today's show, and why you should care about it. Off-air call-in number 813 Three seven seven twenty seven seventy five. You can call us or text us at eight one three three seven seven twenty seven seventy five. Visit us on visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and across the web at Tampa Home Talk. We'll be back in a minute. buying a house. Congratulations. So while you're worrying about the paperwork, leave the moving part to us. We're Woody and Sons Moving Company, a Florida licensed and insured mover, and we offer same-day written estimates. Plus, no sneaky mileage, stairs, or additional stop fees. All we ask is that you check out our great ratings on Google and Angie's List, then go to WoodyandSons.com to learn more. Whether you need a full-service pack and move or some extra hands, at Woody and Sons Moving Company, we move you. My name's Carol Ost, representing the Realtors Care Foundation DTAR. I'm the CEO there, and the foundation is existing to help with down payment assistance, and we gift up to $5,000 for the first time home buyers to purchase a home in Hillsborough County. So please visit us at the Realtors Care Foundation. Of GTAR.org or call us at 813-879-7010. 813-879-7010. Curious where your credit score is? Text the word credit to 813-377-2775. Not sure where it needs to be in order to buy? We'll tell you. Simply text the word credit to 813-377-2775. 2775 for access to your credit score now. Tampa Home Talk on 1250 wins every Saturday at 4 p.m. Hi, I'm Katrina Madewell, host of Tampa Home Talk, right here on 1250 wins every Saturday at 4 p.m. Weekly, I'm going to give you market appropriate, timely information regarding home ownership matters because we want to make your everyday life better. Wherever you are in life, it's our mission to bring you good advice so you can maintain good credit, live within your means, and build wealth. My team and I are passionate about it. Love where you live, or I'll fix it. Tampa Home Talk on 1250 Wins every Saturday at 4. Welcome back. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk on WTAN, WZHR, and WZ. 
Wait, W D C F. Thank you. Sorry, I forgot the last call letters. All right, so is it a sinkhole? Is it not talking about settling Florida's natural resources? What's underneath the ground? What to do if I have cracks and more? So if you missed any part of today's show, definitely check it out in its entirety. We will post it on Facebook, on Twitter, YouTube, and across the web at Tampa Home Talk. So let's dive in where we left off, talking about those sinkholes in the three different types and what happens when we have them, how do we fix them? And even if it's not a sinkhole, it's, it's minor settling, where do we start? Well, it all depends on what the how how bad the settlement is occurring um, and what the cause of the settlement is. Uh, you know, there we kind of mentioned it earlier. There can be a lot of different things that affect whether or not um, the building is settling because of a sinkhole. You can have uh, some organic material in the soil, some um, some just mucky type swamp soils. Um, you can have uh, some clays that expand and contract, and sometimes expand and contract a lot. Um, that really affects the way the house uh, moves, and all those different scenarios require a unique approach to how they're fixed. And some of the worst damage I've ever seen at homes have been organics and clays and not sinkholes. So yeah. really? it's something that it, it can be a, a, a big problem, and people don't really know about it. So being able to say, hey, there's more than just sinkhole here that can be a cause, and and, and you can go from there on how to fix it. Right. Well, let's talk about some of the things that maybe people are doing to disturb Mother Nature, to stir, disturb those surfaces, to do different things to, to affect some of that cracking. Well, the main thing we're doing is we're, we're coming into Florida and we're using the aquifer as our water source. And, you know, we're, the, the more we draw down the aquifer, the more we, we alter the hydrogeology of the state. That can lead to more sinkhole development. Which, let's talk about, because, you know, they impose restrictions on watering and that type of stuff, especially when it hasn't rained in a while. Right. And we've gone through a series of droughts, and then you have a big period of rain that recharges it real quick. That can trigger sinkholes. But, again, we haven't really got back to a point where it has been. You know, we haven't had a, a really big hurricane event or any kind of big rain event in in 10 years we're coming on like oh four oh five was the last time which is great but you know we're still starved for water here. But florida relies on that the the natural ecosystem relies on the hurricanes to replenish that aquifer that's where we get a lot of our water right it's, um, it's our genetic makeup mm-hmm. right so when the aquifer level drops that's why we'll start seeing more stuff on the news where they start creating because it creates that suction right when the level drops it's basically the house is sitting on some type of water right underneath those caverns and caves for well, simple it, and, and the and the, and the soil above it um a good example was about a couple years ago during i think it was january when we had a deep freeze and and the uh, strawberry crops over there in plant city all the farmers um a lot of the farmers you know ran their water for an extended period of time to help protect the plants. But it, it, in that case, it drew down the aquifer in some levels, like 80, oh, 60 to 80 feet in a very short period of time. That actually triggered, I think, almost 200 sinkholes. Some happened on I-4. Mm-hmm. Some houses, I remember were, that. We went out and saw it. I mean, literally, the house just, has just dropped a, a foot. Or, you know, the, some guy's well drops, and then a couple hours later, the house is settling into a sinkhole. Right. So, you know, man is having an influence on this. You know, we're, we, there are things we can do, water conservation, you know, trying to find alter, alternative sources of water to help protect that. Because once we start tapping that out, and especially in South Florida, they they really need to worry about it because you can get, you know, in saltwater intrusion that could destroy the Biscayne Aquifer, which is what they're relying on, and then they're kind of out of luck. So when you talk about alternate sources, are you referring to, like, desalinization? That is one of them. Um, we can actually do aquifer recharge res- restoration where you, you can take water and, and put it back into the aquifer and store it up over time. You can actually create, and you know, our water use, we can reclaim it. After we use it, there's ways to treat it. There's ways to recover some of that water so it's not completely lost. And, there, and there's just, you know, common sense stuff uh, that you can do every day, you know, not running your water. You know, there are restrictions, you know, about watering your grass, things like that, or just, you know, use your common sense. We and, have rain barrels. I mean, we use yeah. that to water our, our plants, It's and those things are full with the rains that we've had. It, it's a perfect example. I mean, if, if everybody pitched in, that would, that would also... Uh, make a big difference i think so lightning round any last minute things you guys want to talk about i know we talked before the show about if you have a neighbor that has a sinkhole and and you see you'll have to help me with this because i'm it's not part of my uh gc makeup i'm not uh, with a number of cubic yards they have to bring in 
and they say concrete, but really it's grout. Oh, you're talking about grouting. Oh, the grout. Okay. okay well, the one one way re, the one way you can fix a sinkhole, you can actually pump concrete underneath your house under high pressure, and that will fill in the voids and limestone and, and densify the soil. And that's how they repair the sinkhole. And then you can also underpin your home if the damage is um, bad enough, and that's foundation repair. Mm-hmm. Um, so. You know, if you sinkholes are very site specific. If just because your neighbor has one or somebody down the street has one, does not mean you have one. Um, so you know, it, 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 you need to be you need to pay attention to what your house is doing. Um, just yeah, and again, it, the more you know about your reports, the more you know about your neighbor's yard, and it, that kind of stuff. You educate yourself and and then kind of decide how to go forward. Do you think it would be safe to say, we were talking about caverns and caves and that type of stuff underneath our surface and under the lime rock. What if there is, like, let's say there's a rubber glove. If you can imagine what that looks like and it's under there, there's all these little fingers. If they bring the concrete of the grout in, certainly some of that might go under the neighbor's house. Well, and it, it can. And honestly, um, and I think Jerry will say this too, it, it's very difficult to predict where that material will go. We try our best. but we, You try to control it by making it, thick versus thin you know you can imagine if you're pumping something underground that's very watery it's very difficult to control where it goes versus something that's like a toothpaste type consistency like, like pancakes right if yeah. you're making pancakes versus crepes exactly. if they're really thick they're going to stay right where you want them mm-hmm. exactly. if your batter's thin it's going to spread out exactly um so and it's kind of a fine line because the idea is to seal off that top of the limestone or the swiss cheese so that no sand can go back down inside it exactly I mean, so, and you were saying that someone, you get this question a lot, if people have cracks in their house and no sinkhole coverage on their insurance policy, how, what can they do about that? Unfortunately, that's the catch-22. If I had, if that's a million-dollar question, if I had an answer for that, I'd, I'd be able to tell you. Um, what we need is perhaps maybe a change in the legislature that is a little bit more consumer-friendly because people don't have coverage. Um, if that's not possible, then, you know, you, you might have to have t- testing done and you might have to pay to fix it yourself. Unfortunately, we see it takes big swings either way, right? Like all the people that were making the claims to push it to the far extreme. And now we already are at the far extreme and it's going to take a lot of people having settlement type stuff that probably should be repaired under their insurance and have company. Coverage. Yeah, yeah, they should have coverage on it, but it's going to take enough of those people going back to Tallahassee, lobbying legislators to say, hey. We need some neutral ground here. Yeah, at this point, to have sinkhole coverage, your home almost has to be dangerous. Mm-hmm. So, Which is crazy because it has to be condemned, right, by the county? For, is that right? Or for, no? the, for the ground cover collapse, it has to be condemned. That's one of the five criteria. So. <laughs> I would ask how can somebody condemn their house if it's not, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any closing thoughts for us today? Um, if you want to know any more about sinkholes, you can just go to our website. It's uh, www.sinkholes.com at Geohazards. Awesome. And we are going to actually post all of your information. Jerry Black with Geohazards and John Williams with Amex, structural engineer and geologist. We're going to post all of our stuff at tampahometalk.com. You can also find it on Facebook and Twitter where you can reach out to these guys. Their phone number, their email address, their websites are going to be on our website, tampahometalk.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Excellent, excellent show. We will be back next week with another brand new show for you. In the meantime, you can catch us here every Thursday and Saturday at 5 p.m. Sometimes we have a new show. Sometimes we replay the good ones. But either way, we'll have a great show lined up for you. Again, catch us Facebook and Twitter across the web at Tampa Home Talk. And our off-air number is 813-377-2775. And call us or text us at 813 813- 377-2775. We're happy to connect you with any of our guests here on Tampa Home Talk. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Be safe on the drive home. And for this week, we are out. WTAN, Clearwater, Tampa Bay. WDCF, Dade City, Tampa Bay. WZHR, Zephyr Hills, Tampa Bay.